All right, hello folks. This is the last lecture before the test, and you got one little problem set to do, so you guys need to work on this. And we're talking about buffers. Buffers are actually a unique uh, system of assets and bases, and they're very special because the buffer can actually hold on, kept the pH at a constant, a relatively constant value, despite adding acid, more acid or base. Well, take a look at that uh, as we go on. So when we talk about this is basically weak acid base chemistry and so we're going to uh, weak base and actually I like to use the weak acid so let's look at acetic acid CH3 CO2H this is the this is the acid and remember when we add it to water we're going to end up uh, dissociating just a little bit of that CH3CO2 CO2 minus, excuse me, plus H3O plus. This is the weak acid. And this is the conjugate base. So this is the conjugate base right here. And so what, when we add the, but we can also start off with the conjugate base. And what we usually have is what we call sodium acetate. And it's written out in two ways. It's either NaCH3CO2 or CH3CO2Na. You know, this Na comes off. Either way, this is acceptable. Both of these are acceptable. So we're going to add this to H2O. And what we'll have is that this will dissociate completely. So we have CH3CO2 minus plus Na plus plus H2O. Now, this, now there is another re reaction that may occur, and that's the, the base dissociation constant reaction, where this reacts with water, neutral, to form CH3, CO2H, plus OH minus. And so we've got these competing reactions occurring. Now, if we have two salts, an acid and a weak base, that are not similar to each other and not conjugate, this doesn't happen. That's another, that's another topic uh, for graduate uh, college. But for here, we're going, when we look at a buffer, it's basically the, a mixture of weak acid and a conjugate weak base. So it has to be the same thing, basically. And we saw it in the previous slide that we're looking at acetic acid and sodium acetate. Those are the combinations we're looking at. And this solution is able to stand a change in pH. And we'll show you how that works in a minute. And so the define, well, to find the buffering capacity is the amount of acid. That's why I didn't touch my pen. There we go. Amount of acid. that the buffer can have without changing pH. A base added without a change in pH. And so that's the buffering capacity. And but this is dependent upon concentration of the buffer. And the higher the concentration of the buffer of the two salts, the higher the buffering capacity. Now how this works, okay, let's look at the weak acid. And we'll stick with the acetic acid. And we end up with H plus, plus CH3, CO2 minus. And then we do the conjugate base. And I'm just gonna write it like this. We use the sodium acetate. Remember the sodium acetate dissolves completely. And it, the reverse reaction is it's a little early in the morning for me, folks. Sorry about this. I'm trying not to make too many mistakes on this. And so we have this. If we add, if we add an acid HCl to this, we're going to add more protons. So we're going to force the reaction to go this way. So we're at, and so we're adding. So we're going to form more acid, but that acid also reacts to form 
to dissociate a little bit more. So we've got this play back and forth. Let's try to these principles happen. It's occurring. Basically, that's when he, if you perturb one side of a reaction, it will go to the opposite direction. So we perturb the right, we get stuff going to the left. If we add base, it's going to form more. Um, it's going to pull off the proton. We're going to end up with more, more of this. And so we've got the conjugate base. So we've got this going back and forth, back and forth. And when we start adding a, a strong acid or strong base to this, um, we expect a large change in the pH. And actually, the pH doesn't change that much until we get a, at about 10 times the amount of acid or base. And then we see a huge change. And what really happens is that uh, the pH is dependent upon the log, the log, base 10 logarithm of the concentration of base over acid. And so what we're doing is we're taking the, the Ka equation, which is Ka is equal to H plus the conjugate base over the acid. All right, so K, so the negative log pKa is to the negative log uh, that's the pH times and let's see. Let's hope I get this right. This is the conjugate. This is the base. That's minus log of the base over acid. I gotta get, make sure I get this right. Let me rewrite that, folks. pKa is equal to pH minus log of base over acid. Move the log over to the other side. So we have the pA, pKa plus log of base over acid. It's equal to pH. And this is how that this is derived. So to change the pH by one unit, so we got a pH of 4.5 to get it to 5.5, we need to add 10 times as much base as acid. So we've got to make this change. And this is the significance of a buffer of a buffered solution, is that the pH does not change. Um, within a certain criteria, and that's uh, plus or minus uh, uh, one from the pKa. So let's look at, at an example. What's the final pH of a solution made by mixing 100 ml of 0.5 moles, 0.05 moles solution of acetic acid and 100 ml of 0.1 molar acetate? And we've got the pKa is for so the pKa is 4.76. So the pH is equal to 4.76. And the constant, we can do this in one of two, two ways. We, go, we need to find the concentration of sodium acetate and, so, and acetic acid. So 0 0.05 times 0 0.1 liter that's moles over liter. That's going to give me 0 0.005 moles. And we're going to do the same for sodium acetate. 100 milliliters is equal to 0 0.1 liters, and that's going to be 0 0.01 mole. Now, this is what this is going to be interesting because we can divide everything by 200 mils, which is the total. But what really happens if we take a look at the, this logarithm, this is base over acid, the concentration of base over the concentration of acid. If I go, let's see, the base is 0 0.01 over 200, or 0 0.2 liters, divided by 0 0.005 over 0 0.2 liters. The 0.2 is going to cancel anyway. So what we could do is you, you can either figure out the concentrations or just give me the total moles. Either way, it's going to be fine. 
long as the final vo volume is going to be constant. It's going to be the same for both acid and base. So let's go to this. Let's go 4.76 pH. So you go to 4.76 plus the logarithm of the base over acid. Coming back up here, the base is 0.01. And this is 0 0.005 for the acid. So I'm expecting the pH goes up a little bit on this. So we get our handy dandy calculator out. And when you're solving this, let's go from right to left, guys. Most, and this is all I want to point out. Everybody can, in math, they always start to go from the left to the right. Honestly, sometimes it's easier if you take the this, start with this, and go to the left with the calculation. So 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.005, take the log, base 10 log of that number, then add it to 4.76, and you should get a pH of 5.06, and we're around to the second decimal point. Now for all pH calculations, you're going to see that all the pH calculations answers are going to either end in the second or the third decimal point. And honestly, with the measurements that we have, this is the where we usually round to because that's the sensitivity of all our pH meters. And if you see something, a pH meter that goes 5.067, this is fluctuating fairly, fairly widely unless it's got a high-end pH meter. So, yeah, for the most part, we're just looking at the second decimal place.